Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are going to do a quick creative edit inside Luminar Neo. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Me, doing a quick edit. I can't believe it either, but that's what we're doing. Now, I loves me a bit of Lightroom. Don't get me wrong, I think it is a fantastic program, but so often I find myself back inside Luminar Neo for doing my final touches. And why is that? Well, Lightroom is a fantastic technical editor for processing our photos. However, when we want to push things in a more creative direction, it's kind of limited. And then we have to switch out to Photoshop, running those two apps to get the final result. Whereas with Luminar Neo, we get the best of both worlds. We've got that raw editing capability and we've got all those creative tools as well. So in this video, let's follow that workflow structure where we kick things off with a really solid raw edit and then we'll sprinkle on that creative dust over the top of it. Let's get into it. So I visited Lake Tiao now in New Zealand and it was a very misty, foggy morning and I managed to get some shots that I actually really liked of the jetty here. Very often the jetty is photographed straight on, something more like this kind of thing here. But for this edit what I'd like to do is work on one of these images here. I had a neutral density filter on and I was just playing around with the length of my shutter speed. A slight variation in angle there but let's work with this file here that I shot with my 10 stop neutral density filter which allowed me to shoot at f11 and 30 second exposure. So that's what's given us this lovely soft silky water going on. What I'm after doing is really enhancing this dreamlike quality to this photo. So we're gonna switch out the profile to a camera flat profile. Actually, before I do that, let me just show you what this looks like in monochrome. This is crying out for a black and white process, but I'm thinking something, I don't know, maybe with a bluey tinge perhaps. So we'll keep it as full color for now. Looking at the photo, you can see we don't really have much contrast. And you can also see that in the histogram as well. So I'm just gonna grab the smart contrast slider and start to push that up. And that's expanded the histogram and given us a more interesting image already. For this one, I don't need to be pulling down my highlights because I'm happy with that bright spot there. And that's working really well that the brightest part of the image is just leading us in towards the end of the pier here. Now don't panic that the stilts of the pier have a converging effect. I had to tilt my camera down to get the frame that I wanted showing more of the water and that caused a keystoning effect on the pier. But I'm gonna show you how we can use Luminar to actually correct that. And that's a really good technique for any architecture or when you have straight lines that happen to converge. So let's just push a little bit of detail into those shadows. You can see if I push that to the right, we've got all of that detail available to us in the stones just underneath the water, but I don't actually want to see that. I'm not too worried about revealing the detail, so we'll just lift it a little bit so the detail is there. And now I'm going to move the white point of my curve over to actually maximize the whites, because as I've explained previously, if we move the white slider, we get a bunching effect on our histogram. And I don't want that. I want to actually expand the tonal range in a linear fashion. I'm just gonna press the J key on the keyboard just to make sure we're not blowing any pixel detail out. So as soon as we see those warnings, we just bring it back and we can do the same with the blacks as well. So we're just starting to clip those in the pier there. That's pretty good, but we have lost a lot of contrast. So all I need to do is just pull this down, lift up the shadows a little bit, something like that's pretty good. Now, in terms of the color balance, rather than going for an as shot or keeping it very neutral, what I would like to do is actually push this really far into the blues. You know, take it to the extreme, not that I want to leave it like this, but now I can come in and just reduce the saturation so that we're imbuing our photo with that sense of blue. Now I can just toggle between the saturation and the temperature just to get it set up how I want it. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. We'll just check the sharpness. I think we could probably push a little bit of sharpness into the pier itself. And as I push the sharpness up, obviously that's going to reintroduce some of the noise. So just to balance it out, I'll just put a little bit of noise reduction in there. Now I always like to turn on auto fix chromatic aberrations, even though this lens is pretty good optically and also auto defringe, why not turn those on? Just let the software give us a little helping hand. But one thing, sometimes I turn it on, sometimes I don't, is the auto distortion corrections. You would have seen how the whole geometry of the photo just changed when I turned that on. So the easiest place to see the distortion is at the edge of the frame. If I turn on the distortion corrections, Luminar Neo actually applies a corrective profile, which straightens everything up for me. The tilt of the camera, that's something different altogether. And that's where we need to come into the transform section. Now, the easiest way to fix this is just to click this button here and bammo, Luminar is going to analyze your photo and straighten up those verticals. Awesome. If you want, you don't need to use that option and you can actually come in and manually dial in the amount of vertical correction you want 
or horizontal correction, if that's where the issue lies, not in this case. And then we have access to the aspect slider, which allows us to stretch our photo horizontally or vertically. So you can actually use this slider for creative purposes. So in this case, I feel the photo may actually benefit from giving the peer a little vertical stretch just gives it a little more dominance in the frame. Okay, that's our raw edit done. What else would I like to do? Well, I always think it's worth grabbing the Accent AI slider and just having a play around with that and seeing whether you like the effect that Luminar applies. In this case, I'm not really loving it, but I might just put a little bit of that in. Now, Structure AI is certainly going to bring out all the detail in all of the stones through the water, a little bit through the pier itself as well. So what I might do here is actually add a little bit of structure through the pier. So I'm just gonna come into my masking and just paint that in over the pier. I don't need to be too precise with that. Toggle the eyeball tool just to check I'm happy with it, which I am. Now I'll close that tool down. If I want to apply a different structural effect, I just open the tool again, which I'm gonna do. This time I'm going to reduce the amount and I'm gonna grab a linear gradient and I'm gonna just pull that up from the bottom of the frame and that's just gonna soften those stones off slightly. Now, one of the things I absolutely have to take care of is the dust spots all over the photo. Should have cleaned my sensor before I went out. That's particularly prevalent when you're doing landscape work and you're shooting with an F11 or higher F-stop. That's when you're gonna see those dust spots. So thankfully, Luminar Neo can do that automatically for us. So I'm just gonna come up to the Arrays section here and click on remove dust spots. That's a really nice time saving feature. Awesome, now if I toggle the before and the after, you can see in the sky, there's several spots, but there's one just above the bridge there that you can see now. And now this is the after, it's taken care of it for us, perfect. Now I don't wanna get caught up in too much of the detail of the editing process in this one, but what I would like to do is just remove or at least reduce some of the brighter stones that are catching my eye. So all I'm gonna do is use the clone tool, but not use it 100% because I don't wanna get rid of them completely, but I'm just gonna dial them back. So I'm gonna sample from a pretty neutral zone in the photo, and I'm painting with a strength of 50%, so what I click and paint over here, it's just gonna dull down that stone and I'll just resample from another point, and again, just click and paint over these brighter stones just to dial them back just a little bit so they're not as eye-catching. And every time I want to sample a new area, I just hold the Alt key or Option on a Mac, sample from an area, and then I can paint that over the area where the brighter stones are. So I've zoomed into the stony foreground slightly so that we can see our before and our after, and see how those brighter stones are just being tamed down slightly, helping to give a more tranquil feel to this photo. Okay, now I just feel that the blue is getting away on us a little bit, so I'm gonna introduce a color tool where I'm just gonna drop the saturation down, I don't know, somewhere around sort of 27, that's good. And one other thing I think would benefit this photo is helping to draw our viewer's eye more in towards the end of this pier. And a great way to do that is by adding contrast only through this area. and one of my favorite tools for adding contrast is the curves tool. So I'm just gonna bring down the shadows, put a point for the highlights and just raise that up slightly. And currently we've added contrast through the whole photo. So what do I need to do? Well, I wanna create a mask and a radial mask coming out from this center point here will be a great way just to pinpoint that brightness through there. So if I close that tool down, and I toggle our before and after, it does look good, but we're actually affecting the outer part of the photo. That's not what I wanted to do. I want the opposite of that. So masking, I'm just gonna to come to my mask actions. And if I show the mask, you're gonna see that, of course it's affecting the outer part because that's where the mask is showing up. What we want to do is invert that. And now we're gonna affect this area of the photo. So now I'll jump back and we can see our before and after. And now you can see that nice contrast and light pop at the end of the pier. Perfect. So far, so good and nice and easy. And you can do most of this inside Lightroom, I know that. So it's the next part where we're gonna get a little bit more creative. What I'd like to do is utilize a duplicated version of what we've created already. On top of this, as a layer, we're gonna change the blending mode and we're also gonna change the way that the actual layer interacts by actually manipulating the pixels. We're gonna blur them. So let me show you that approach. So I'm gonna come over to the left-hand side here where we have the layer section. I'm just gonna right-click on the thumbnail and I'm gonna duplicate our layer. And now what we're going to do is blur this layer. So I'm gonna come down here, choose blur, 
And I think we'll go with the Gaussian blur for now. And the great thing is we can always come in and change these settings anyway. And I'm just gonna push this quite far pretty much destroyed the photo as you can see. But now watch what happens if we come back up here to our layer properties, we can actually change the blend mode, the way that this interacts with the layer underneath. So I'll just hover over the different options and you can see how we can get a different effect depending on which option we go for. So one of my favorite blending modes is soft light. Overlay is a pretty cool one, but it's a little bit too strong in this case. So soft light is quite good. I also liked what was going on with screen, creating a very soft ethereal look, but it's over baking things. Um, you could argue that soft light is too, but that's why we have the opacity slider. So if I take this all the way down, we go back to our original underlying layer, push it all the way to 100. This is our blurred soft light layer. And now we can just play with the opacity to decide how much of that effect we want in. And I think we're nearly done, but this central area here, this brighter area, I feel like it's pushing to white and I'd like to actually put a color in there. So an easy way to do that would be with the toning tool. So that's gonna allow us to select the highlights. And if I push the saturation all the way up, you can see we've now got a color going on in the highlights and I can change my hue to actually select something that I would prefer. And I quite like the idea of putting a more sort of turquoise tint into the highlights. We have the amount slider so we can make it stronger or weaker. I don't know, somewhere around 29, I'm happy with that before and after, maybe a little too strong. And now even though we can't see the horizon, I feel like I didn't quite get my transformation correct at the beginning. So I'm gonna come in and just have a little tweak of that just rotate it around slightly. Yeah, I think that's a better crop. It's a little deceiving because the furthest wooden beam is actually on a tilt and you can tell that because the shadow actually comes back in the opposite direction. But if we look at the actual metal frame itself, that is perpendicular, that's straight up and down. So I'm gonna say I'm happy with that, a nice creative ethereal edit. Let's look at our before. This is where we started with our raw file and this is where we've got to. Here's our before and here's our after. I feel like I may have just overcooked the blue ever so slightly, so I'm gonna jump into the color section and reduce the saturation. Now, you'll notice if I took that all the way out, we're not actually reducing the saturation to zero because we're only reducing the saturation of the blurred layer because that's the one highlighted that we're currently working on. The one that's underneath still contains blue. And we are still seeing that through the top layer. So with the top layer selected, yes, we can control the saturation, but we can only control the saturation of that layer itself. But I think by taming down that blue, I think it gives it a little more subtlety and a little bit more gravitas as an image overall. So. Let me know in the comments what you think to this photo edit. And if you'd like to see a photo edit where I go a little bit deeper into more of the photo editing tools in Luminar Neo, you might wanna check out that video right there. And if you don't have Luminar Neo yet and would like to get it with a discount, I've got a link in the description below that you're more than welcome with to. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. You can click that and subscribe as well. See you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.